In the past 100 years, agricultural land equivalent in size to China and India combined has been compromised, degraded, or depleted. With world population approaching 8 billion in the next two decades, the pressure to cut down the remaining forests on our planet to attain more cropland could increase dramatically. By pioneering ways to restore fertility to the poorest and most degraded soils in Latin America and Africa, the 2002 World Food Prize laureate, Dr. Pedro Sanchez, has made a major contribution to preserving our delicate ecosystem, while at the same time offering great hope to all those struggling to survive on marginal lands around the world. Born on the island of Cuba in 1940, Pedro Sanchez's early years were dominated by his two great passions in life, a fascination with the land and the challenges of the sea. Much of our laureate's childhood was spent at his family's farm outside of Havana, where at a very early age he developed an interest in Cuba's tropical red soil. He spent much of his youth traveling the countryside with his father, an agronomist who showed Cuban farmers and sugarcane producers how to best fertilize the soil to make it more productive. It was on these trips that our laureate first came to understand that science, especially when applied to the soil, has the power to uplift the poor. Pedro's father also introduced him to the romance and the challenge of deep sea fishing. Pedro can still vividly recall setting out the first time in a small rowboat with his father and returning with what he felt was an impressive catch. As he grew older, he took on greater challenges, eventually winning the Ernest Hemingway fishing contest in his senior year of high school. Pedro's interest in agricultural science also grew during his high school days in Havana, where he ranked at the top of his class. Upon graduation in 1958, Pedro ventured to the United States, where he enrolled at Cornell University. In 1968, Dr. Sanchez took a position leading the North Carolina State University rice research team that helped Peru in just three short years achieve among the highest rice yields in the world. Yet it was the soil that held the greatest fascination for our laureate. In the Peruvian Amazon, Dr. Sanchez observed that bulldozer land clearing and slash and burn farming had already deforested half of the region with devastating environmental effects. And it was in Brazil that he encountered the problem that would be the focus of his life's work, the widespread belief that tropical soils were useless for agricultural production. Most people believed the situation was hopeless, but Pedro Sanchez met the challenge. Working closely with Brazilian officials, he began an intensive research program on the Cerrado, an area of non-productive tropical soil equivalent in size to Western Europe. Over the next decade, after painstaking research and experimentation, he and his team made their breakthrough discovery that with the right combination of minerals and fertilizers applied to the correct soil depths at the right time, the Cerrado could be brought to life. In what was the single largest increase in arable agricultural land anywhere in the world in the past half century, 30 million hectares of land were brought into production. Average yields dramatically increased by 60%. The total grain harvest tripled and Brazilian soybean production became on a par with the United States, making the Cerrado the breadbasket of Latin America. Pedro Sanchez and his team had destroyed the myth that tropical soils were useless for food production. In 1991, the focus of our laureate's work shifted across the Atlantic Ocean when he accepted a position in Nairobi as the Director General of the International Center for Research in Agroforestry, known by its acronym ICRAF. Africa would be the scene of some of Dr. Sanchez's most daunting challenges and significant achievements. It was there that he had his greatest fishing triumph, landing a 589-pound black marlin, just a little larger than his first catch back in Cuba. And it was there that Pedro Sanchez made his most enduring contribution to ending world hunger 
Sub-Saharan Africa had long seemed impervious to the advances of the Green Revolution. On one of his first visits to a farm field in Kenya, Dr. Sanchez scooped up some African soil and instinctively understood why even new miracle seeds with large amounts of fertilizer could not produce significant yields. The reason why is massive nutrient depletion. The nutrients have been taken out mainly as crop harvests and not returned enough via crop residue returns or manures or fertilizers and therefore the soil has been gradually depleted of nutrients. So what was once very fertile, excellent soils is now just totally infertile soil. As our laureate noted, this situation not only leads to an endless cycle of poverty, but also contributes to violence and war. A lot of the catastrophes in Rwanda and Burundi have this nutrient depletion, fertility depletion as one of the underlying causes of it. Energized by his insight, Dr. Sanchez began an urgent research effort to develop an affordable, comprehensive soil rejuvenation program for East Africa. A plant needs 17 essential nutrients, uh, of which two are the most important and critical, nitrogen and phosphorus. They are essential nutrients. Without them, no organisms, plants or animals or humans could live. Dr. Sanchez experimented with adding varying amounts of native rock phosphate to the soil, while simultaneously planting selected types of trees and bushes alongside rows of crops. The trees and plants would pull nitrogen from the air, infusing it into the soil and eventually the crops. By 2002, the nearly 150,000 farmers who had adopted Dr. Sanchez's innovative agroforestry approach achieved dramatically increased yields, sometimes as much as 200 to 400 percent. In addition, it was demonstrated that this comprehensive natural resource management approach captured more carbon, the leading cause of global warming, than any other agricultural practice. But most importantly, people using this approach no longer suffered extreme food deprivation. In Kenya, the leader of one tribe made Dr. Sanchez an honorary chief because, he said, for the first time in living memory, the people in his village were no longer hungry at night. Nobel Peace Prize laureate Dr. Norman Borlaug, the man who inspired the creation of the World Food Prize, said Dr. Sanchez's soil fertility replenishment formula may be the key to a green revolution in Africa. To this end, over the next decade, ICRAF plans to help African farmers plant 5.5 billion more trees, the equivalent of another tropical rainforest. Their goal is to help move 20 million people out of poverty and remove more than 100 million tons of carbon from the air. Dr. Pedro Sanchez has brought renewed hope that the endless cycle of poverty affecting millions of people in Africa can at last be broken. Reflecting this enormous contribution, Secretary General Kofi Annan has selected Dr. Pedro Sanchez to chair his special task force on hunger as part of the United Nations Millennium Development Project. Aimed at reducing by one half the number of people in the world suffering from hunger, this is an awesome challenge. But then, our laureate has been confronting such seemingly insurmountable challenges throughout his entire life. It is especially fitting that in this, the 100th year of Cuban independence, the highest scientific accolade ever bestowed upon a native of Cuba is presented to Dr. Pedro A. Sanchez, the 2002 World Food Prize Laureate.